Good morning, Huntington Chapel. Welcome to those who are joining us online. I trust that you had a, a blessed week. It was a particularly difficult week for me and my family. But the Lord has saw us through. Amen. This week I had the privilege of meeting, I just forgot his name. <laughs> wow. Yes, well, I, I, I met this gentleman. He's homeless. And he struck up a conversation with me because he needed some money. But at the end of that conversation, and it was a little bit long. He had a lot to say. I asked him, can I pray for you? He was taken aback. He said, I don't normally do this, but yeah, you could pray for me. And I prayed a blessing over that man. And when I was done, he said, what was your name? Because he received it. So, Father, I just ask that you would continue to bless your, your son. You see, the kingdom of God is built on relationship and Jesus came and showed us what that looks like in 1 Corinthians 13 Paul writes this if I speak in tongues of men and of angels but have not love I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have faith that can move the mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. And it is not proud. It is not rude. And it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And it keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes and always perseveres because love never fails please stand with me as we open our service father we thank you we thank you for this house. Father, we thank you that you love to dwell in your house. And we thank you because of Jesus, that house is right here inside of each one of us in your house. Lord, we ask that today your love would flow, that you would Touch each one of your sons and your daughters. 
that they would experience the love of the Father. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Huntington Chapel. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. God, we give you the glory. Lord, we give you the glory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can we just give God some praise right now? Can we give God some praise right now? your name on high Lord I love to sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us let's sing that together now Lord I lift your name on high Lord I love to sing your praises so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show. So glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Let's sing that together now. 
this morning we lift your name we magnify your name this morning you are worthy of it Jesus
break out. Spirit, break out. Break our walls down. Break our walls down. Spirit, break out.
Should we leave it at the cross? Can we give God some praise right now? Break our walls down this morning, God. Let us leave differently than we came, God.
Sometimes I wish we had a little track on the floor here and you can just hit a button and this would come out, but uh, maybe someday. It is time for us to respond to God in prayer. Uh, I don't know about you. Oh, I guess I should say you should be seated. Um, I don't know about... I mean, I don't know. Does anybody have good weeks or we just all have rough weeks? Every time I see people, it's like, how is this? Because, yeah, this, this was yet another challenging week. I mean, it was Wednesday. I had the plan in my mind as what I was going to do. And then an email came in. And for the next three days, I was wrestling with the problem. I don't know about you, but I needed prayer. And I sure do now. Uh, I thought about how to do this. I could do this as a bidding prayer where I raise the subject and invite you as we pray together to just speak out loud. But I realize that not everybody is comfortable doing that. And so I have pen, I have paper, and I will take solicit requests from all of you and uh, take them down and we will pray them together. So. After all the introduction, you guys are all... Oh, wait. Yes, Pam. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. Well, I certainly hope your MRI turned out better than my last one. I had twins. Two little kidney stones. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be praying for you. Yes. Anyone else? Yes, Jill. Um, for guidance for my daughter, she's debating whether or not to take a precaution to Yes. Yes, Pam. First, the deliverance from Jacob. Secondly, connect with the Lord and his Lord will be able to heal him and he won't cancel and he'll be able to pay for his back. Hopefully she doesn't have twins either. 
Yes. Yes. You aren't cleaning the basement, are you? Okay. Yes, Jenny. Do your doctors have like the milk club where you, ever, you go so many times you get a free visit? No? No. You ought to suggest that to them. Okay, we will. It used to be like that years ago, but no more. Well, I, I did hear a story. My former church, um, one of our oldest parishioners, her husband was the first dentist in town. And he was located across the street from an ice cream parlor. And so it was an inducement to the kids to go get their teeth checked he would give them a coupon for a free Sunday. Talk about self-interested business decisions. <laughs> yes, I saw some. Ma'am, yeah. Yes, Danny. I saw you, Lisa. Yes. My wife married Joe Burke, Steve Dumar, and everything turns out all right. Yes. Hello, Lori. Welcome. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. Anyone else? I should open it up. If you have good news that you want to share with us, you're welcome to do that as well. Yes. Yes. And her name again, I didn't quite catch it. Oh, Amber. 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 Yes. Yes, Joan. And wisdom. Because the one thing you will discover. Well done. 
I see you pointing somebody. Oh, oh, yes, forgive me. I, I, Okay. Anyone else? Oh, Donnie. Keep your hands warm too. <laughs> well, I know this this is that time of year where it. Uh, well, you guys cool. You got cool gloves. No, it was uh, we were sitting out on our. I'm not sure what you call it. I guess covered porch, covered deck. Uh, yesterday afternoon, having lunch, and there's just beautiful yellow leaves on the tree facing. And uh, yeah, this is a this is a grand time of year to be living here. For the snowbirds, it will become much more challenging in about a month and a half, but uh, right now, it doesn't get any nicer than this. And so as we prepare ourselves to pray, it's the, the challenge that we are coming before a God who welcomes us to come as we are. But he remains God. He is the, the one that when Moses asked to see his glory, God told him, you will see my back. Because if you see me face to face, you will die. And there's that disconnect. So as we prepare ourselves, I, I want us to examine our hearts and uh, make a confession to God. And so that's, that's how we will open. And um, so if we can bow our heads. Heavenly Father, maker of the universe, creator of all these colorful leaves, creator of new life, God of the 64 colored box of crayons, we thank you for all that you have done. I pray that we would learn to appreciate be in awe of your holiness and your majesty. We come before you as beggars in need of mercy and your grace. In ways large and small, we have not lived up to the the life you would have us lead. We have sinned, Father. And yet you bid us come because you are rich in mercy. Forgive us and renew us, O Lord. We lay bare our needs before you. Have mercy on us. We pray for our friends and loved ones who are battling cancer. We think of Mike. We pray for a good result from the MRI and strength to continue going through this trial, as I know it is not easy. And we wish that we would not have to destroy the body in order to save it. We also lift up Joey. Lift up Mary facing her procedure tomorrow. We pray for Jenny as she has multiple doctor visits. Give her peace, patience and peace. As I know it's not fun going. We pray for Naomi's knee. For Brittany, for Amber. For safe pregnancy. For Veronica, who's dealing with her back, Lisa's throat. For 
Pastor Doug, who is not with us today, that he would touch his body. For Danny, who is facing depression. Pray for Lori as well and Joey, who are also battling cancer. We come before you again in our neediness that only you ultimately can heal and save. Whether it is through the doctors, whether it is through something we would call a miracle. We pray for these. We pray for our families as the jangle of relationships, past hurts, frustrations, disappointments. In the strange sense that no matter how much they hurt us, we are still connected. interesting to recall, Lord, that even you dealt with issues with your family, your cousin questioned whether you were who you said you were, your own brothers questioned whether you were in your right mind. Be with us in these situations. Help us to love our loved ones. Help us to work through the broken relationships. We pray for those who are seeking you. We often look at it as a passive act on your part, Lord, that we're the ones doing the searching, seeking high and low, digging into the, the depths of things in an effort to find you, making you the object of our quest. But we forget that you are active and you are seeking us slowly, methodically, relentlessly. That you would reach out to those who are seeking. That you would, in your own ways, brush past our fears, our anger. That you are large enough to take it all. We pray for the strength to maintain daily life. We think of Marilyn and Jim and the work that they have to do. We think of Naomi facing her promotion. We think of those battling addiction. That we forget how fragile life is. And the fact that we need you at every hour of the day and every moment. Guide us, O oh Lord, strengthen us to the tasks before us in the week to come. We pray for Jill's husband. He continued to recover from Lyme, but that the presence he felt would stay with him. But I pray also that it would, I guess the term I would use is grow. Help us to walk the, the paths of our lives in sunshine and in clouds. May I lift up Elder Steve as he prepares to give the message on short notice that you will uh, speak through him and use him well. That your word would embed itself in our hearts 
and speak to us throughout the day. We thank you, Lord, that you hear, that your arm is not too short to respond. And you encourage us to come before you with our petitions. I pray that you would grant them, not for our sake, but for the sake of your glory and through the love of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through the Spirit, we, pre we present these prayers to you, O Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I... Yes? Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. And I think the next step is Amen. Let's let's give him some glory. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. We serve a mighty and awesome God, and we need to be excited because there is good news in the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is freedom and deliverance in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we need to be excited about that. There's those moments where you gotta look in the mirror and preach to yourself and say, yes, God, your promise is a yes, and we say amen, amen. So this is the part of the service where we uh, just talk about announcements. And I'm seeing so many new faces. Welcome to Huntington Chapel, those who are here for the first time, amen. Amen. It is a blessing to have you this morning. Um, so new membership class uh, will be on October 29th and November 5th, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. For those who feel, I want to make this church my home. I feel like God is calling me here, and I want to be part of building what God has called us to build as Huntington Chapel. Amen. And next Sunday, after service, actually, you just, you come on. Mm -hmm. there you go. Next Sunday, after service, is our parent meeting. So I just want to remind all parents or guardians or family members that want to come out and see what's going on with our young people. And then the week after that, November 5th, I'm going to be doing, <clears throat> we're going to be doing children's church, but also middle school and high school. I'll be doing that for them. Amen. Amen. Uh, this November 11th will be the return of our young adult ministry, uh, Chosen Stones. Amen. This is age groups from uh, 18, graduating high school, up to about 35 years old. And we welcome that will be November 11th, starting at 7 p.m. Um, our regular scheduled services throughout the week, we have Higher Ground Ministry, which is on Monday at 7 p.m. Amen. I invite the community to that. On Tuesday, uh, we have our dance ministry team meeting that starts at 7 p.m. Um, on Thursday, we have Jesus Story Time. Uh, this is uh, from 10 a.m. to 11, and this is from 0 to 5, and parents, please come with your children, and they will be blessed and read a story. Um, Saturday, 9 a.m., men's prayer and Bible study. Amen? And youth group on, how did I forget that? Youth group on Thursday, 6 p.m., that is vital. Vital, and we need to be praying for our youth leaders, amen? We are in a troubled time, but God is still good in the midst of it. All right, so we're going to transition to giving, and then we'll continue on with our service.
Father, we thank you. We thank you for the faithfulness found in your people. We pray, God, that as this, your people have sown into this house, into the vision, into, into uh, all the things that we are desiring to do for you in this season. Father, we pray that you will give us strategy, power to be influential, not just in the community, but in Shelton, in the valley, and in the region. God, we thank you for all that you have done. And we say all this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Children, you may be dismissed for Children's Church. Amen. And those who are serving, there's also a nursery as well. Amen. Al? You ready? Okay. Good morning. How is everybody? I gotta tell you, I woke up this morning so looking forward to being here with all of you. Oh, it's such a great, great feeling. You know, um, I just want to let you know one thing. I'm gonna have a sign-up sheet, so next week we're all gonna go see Naomi at her store, and we all have to buy something <laughs> when her upper manager is in there. But we got to pretend we don't know her. She's just, she's a fantastic manager. <laughs> um, I wanted to just talk a little bit. We had uh, a, a great men's retreat or attack, as the pastor would say, uh, this past weekend. You know, God's always throwing surprises. And... The men we have, oh, we, we had three or four uh, new gentlemen join us, not only uh, here at the chapel, but come on the retreat. It, it never ceases to amaze me, the talents, uh, the spirituality that, that these men bring. It's just so heartwarming to know we could get a group, about 20 men just together, and we all have each other's back. It's... it's such a blessing. Um, and in the future, I'd like to invite more and more of you men because let me tell you, you, you can't go wrong. When you have each other's back and you got that support and that warmth, we can do anything. So I just want to ask a couple of the guys, I've already talked to a few of you, uh, just to come up and give a little bit of your testimony. We don't want to take up too much time, but uh, Gary, would you like to come up and say what's something? <coughs> Yeah, I thought it was a, a very good five days. Uh, usually, my experience is men don't share a lot. And not like women. Women tend to be more open than men. And uh, I was amazed at uh, uh, the openness of the men. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I saw a lot, of, a lot of things happen spiritually. And uh, I hope all you wives appreciate your, your husbands after that weekend. But I think for myself, uh, the biggest thing was when uh, Pastor Greg was, was preaching about, uh, about Elisha. And I don't know if you know the story about uh, Elisha and the School of the Prophets. And they went into the woods to cut down trees and build a bigger house for, for, the, for, their, for their place. And the whole, the whole message was sharpening your axe. And, you know, if you have a dull axe, you can't really chopped down many trees. And then when you lose your axe, like one of the, one of the young prophets did, it fell into water, and uh, it was a borrowed axe to begin with, and he was all worried about getting that axe, axe back. And, and so Elisha hits the water with his stick, and the, the, the Bible says the iron floated, you know. And uh, I was thinking about that all night long. And in the King James, it says the iron did swim. And... Uh, I usually read the King James. So all night long I was thinking about it. And, you know, there's two ways in which the Lord works. The Lord works where people will uh, get an epiphany, get a, get a revelation, read the Bible, do what the Bible says. And then you're, you're prosperous, you're blessed, and things work out in your marriage, things work out in your job, things work out with your children. You know, all the different 
issues that you, you pray about, right? But when the iron swims, that's a miracle, you know, and you can't make the iron swim. <laughs> I mean, you could do what the Bible says and, and, and sharpen your axe and cut down trees and build a nice building and however you do that all, right? But to make the iron swim, that's a miracle. And, you know, I was thinking about, you know, because most of the guys were younger than me. Uh, I used to think back when I used to run, and it was 15 years since I ran. He, he, he ran about five miles. Uh, at this, so I wouldn't say that you're... Well, I mean, I have arthritis in my knees. I have a torn meniscus in this knee. I recently fell. I hit my back. I was in bed for almost a month. And I started thinking about all these things of why I couldn't do something, right? And, uh, you know, especially when you talk to older people, you, it just reinforces your thinking, right? And, uh, but I kept hearing that, that word, the iron did swim. So I uh, got my running shoes on, and I ran into Eduardo, and he's a runner. And I said, just in case I don't make it back, can you take me out of the woods? And, <laughs> We're going to give him some chance to something. To yeah. And, and anyway, long story short, ran a mile. I figured if I could run a mile, I, I'd declare victory, and that would be a miracle for me. But we kept talking, kept talking, kept talking about different issues and whatever, and we ended up running five miles. And to me, that was, uh, that was a miracle. <laughs> uh, I tell you, uh, Gary, is a, he's a real blessing. Uh, amazing man. Uh, Jorge. Let me tell you, I've seen Jorge here for a couple of weeks. I didn't, I didn't really know him. What an amazing man. Oh, what an amazing man. And yesterday at our work day, Jorge, what, you've been here three times? Maybe four times to the chapel? He came and he stayed and helped us paint to the end. Just like an amazing man. Amazing man. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, just to share a little bit about myself. Um, when I was probably around eight years old and I was pretty destitute, uh, that was my first encounter as a child with God. And, and people ask me how, coming from a background as mine, I was partially orphaned for a few years and so on and so forth. And I was so blessed that I ended up all the way to becoming an executive at GE Capital. And people will ask me, how did you do it? And I will always say to them that the way I did it is because God told me that he loved me when I was eight. Amen. But then as I started working, I got lost and, and totally forgot about that relationship with God. And uh, I've struggled because of it uh, a lot. And um, finally decided to come back. And for the first time in my life, I'm actually building a genuine relationship. Oh, yeah. And um, so, so I, I, you know, I, I can't put it in probably proper terms, what I experienced at the, at the men's retreat. Uh, but before I say that, I would be remiss to say that uh, as a newcomer to the church, as someone that is starting back, you know, kind of restarting the engine in my relationship with God. I was so blessed to meet all of, all of the men up there because through their wisdom, through their guidance, um, I learned a lot. Um, and, I, and, I, and I took you guys very seriously because I know you guys are men of God. And so your advice to me, sharing your stories, your testimonies, all of you, Pedro and Gary, Georgie, Al, everyone, Steve, uh, Dan, helped me out a lot. Um, so here's my testimony. Um, you know, I've heard a lot about praying, and I've heard a lot about listening to God. And I've struggled with that because a lot of times the voices in my head, my thoughts, just scramble uh, that relationship. And one night uh, we were sitting at the dinner table uh, and Pastor um, um, Greg uh, said, hey, we're going to pray. And, and something in my heart told me that as we were praying, to inhale real deep and say, I eat your flesh, Jesus, and then as I exhale, I surrender my flesh. And similarly, as I inhaled, I drink your blood, Jesus, 
And as I exhaled, I surrendered my blood. And I just was doing these deep breaths. And I started feeling this warmth. Uh, I started kind of somewhat sweating, but it wasn't warm. Um, and then I started crying, just crying. Um, and then I saw a light. I, I, I literally saw a light. And, you know, my family for generations has struggled. And, and, and I, I'm going to share this because this is what I saw. Um, I saw the devil. And, you know, and, and, and I've never seen, seen it like I saw it at that point in time. I saw it as a snake that had different torsos, and each head was going to someone in my family uh, to attack them. I couldn't see its, its tail. And as I look back, because I was trying to see the tail, I could see my grandparents. I could see probably their parents, because I couldn't even put a face to them. And then I realized that that's the generational hurt. And then, and then, and then he talked to me. He actually talked to me. And, and he said these words to me. He said, look, Jorge, you've been avoiding your family. You've been isolating yourself from your family because you're afraid of them. You're afraid of what they do. And, and you're afraid that they're going to hurt you again. And they potentially, they're going to hurt your family. But you got to stop. And he goes, I want you to go to everyone in your family and bring them to me. And so that's what I'm doing. And today, my brother, my nieces, my niece's boyfriend are here. And I'm going to bring more people. Well, let me tell you, uh, you said you're like making a jump start. Yeah. We have the jumper cables. <laughs> <laughs> but, but with that, so that was my story. Thank you so much. Thank you, Georgie. And I just want to mention another thing. Uh, Gary, you had mentioned when, when the men came home, I hope the women could appreciate. I just want to tell you, we appreciate you all the time. I, hi, sure. Uh, Danny. I'm going to be totally transparent and come clean. I had crazy anxiety all week about going on the retreat. I've been on these retreats before, and we were going back to the same place we went last year. We had a blast last year. I'm like, why do I have this anxiety? Is it, maybe I don't like crowds. I don't know. I think it was, um, I was worried about who was going to aggravate me there. <laughs> <laughs> who was going to make a mess? <laughs> who was going to be talking too loud? I got a lot of stipulations, man. I live with Barb. Barb. We could have a whole sermon on this thing. And I didn't want to leave Barb. And I was really, I had anxiety. I really, really did. I'm like, oh my God. I don't, I don't. So I went to school that day and I got my car set up and uh, packed and left from school. And I put on the Audible Bible uh, that we've been listening to. And I just was me, just me driving. Somebody accused me of being stingy with my seat there, because I just drove by myself, but it was just the way it was, you know, I came, I went from school, I didn't have, I didn't come back to the chapel and drive anybody there, but I, I had my own little couple hours, I made some phone calls, and anyway, I got my heart set to, to go, and um, God calmed my anxiety, because when I got there, I had a nice place to sleep, because I have a CPAP machine, so I need a little, you yeah. know. I didn't get a bunk bed, which was really good because it would have been hard to try to sleep with a CPAP machine and a bunk bed. But I did. I connected with a lot of the guys. Now, Jorge and I, great conversations. I got to really get to know him, hear his story. He heard my story. And then my brother John, we went to this picture. We went to him. It was about an hour drive. And John and I came and we shared each other's stories. And I actually, I shared this anxiety story with him, right? Uh, so you were the first one to hear this. But... I just love the sense of community. I, we, I stood back at one time, and I'm like, all these guys are just connecting, fellowship, and loving on each other, building each other, strengthening each other, and working together. And the guys were building Adirondack chairs. But even, even, even smaller stuff like cleanup. 
Last year, we waited to the end to clean up. It was stressful. Al ends up staying until 6.30 at night, and everybody was, you know, everybody left him. <laughs> I, I think most of us left him, including myself. Uh, but this, this time, we, we all got together, and before the pastor preached on a Saturday, we say, hey, guys, let's, let's all work together, and we'll take 40 minutes, and we'll just knock it out. <laughs> and we knocked it out. And we knocked it out. All a bunch of guys who probably aren't domesticated at home. Okay. <laughs> Probably, probably, I'm not going to say no, but probably not. We're domesticated. We work together. It was a wonderful thing to experience. To, a wonderful thing to experience. That means I got to get off the stage. In, in, in a nice diplomatic way. Your time's up. Well, thank you anyway. And uh, just call up one more uh, our, uh, our anchor, uh, George. Wow, it was a great weekend. We had some really serious talks uh, about life, about uh, the Bible, spiritual things. Uh, the one thing that stuck out with me was hard. Was uh, We had a discussion for a couple hours about forgiveness. Right, forgiveness. And uh, we all know that scripture, you know, how many times should you forgive somebody? Seven times 70, right? So does that mean you get a book and you write them down? Here's number two, three, four, 900. Uh, no, it doesn't. It says there's so many, don't count them. You know, and then in the world, people say, well, you could forgive, but don't ever forget, right? So uh, I saw guys taking action. They got on the phone and called people and asked for forgiveness. So it was really touching. So it touched me that uh, I had to go home and I wrote a letter to my father. So he's still alive. He's 98. He, uh, he can't hear much, so it's very difficult to communicate with him. So I wrote him a letter and gave it to him a couple days ago. So uh, I would encourage anyone here that needs to forgive somebody, now's the time to do it. Don't wait. Don't wait till it's too late. So anyone else wants to go to a men's retreat, we'll have another one next year. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. And... Uh, we could have just keep on going on with testimonies. Uh, like I said, we had some great men. We have Jim with us. We had John. I could just go on and on. Uh, but the pictures that you've seen flashing is we actually went to a, a place um, called the Equinox. It's one of the. It's a private road, one of the highest points in uh, Matt, uh, Vermont. And we were. I've been trying to schedule a trip where we could see the foliage at its peak. It's never happened. It's always we're too late because, you know, there's a small window. Yeah. Not trying and thinking about it this year, we landed right at peak. And it was so beautiful, the, the mountains in the background, and the, and the men really appreciated it. So yeah. that's our testimonies for the weekend. <laughs> if we can extend our hands to Father, we just thank you for this man of God. We thank you for uh, the servant he is, not just to you, God, but to your people, how he loves and comes alongside and prays diligently. Father, use him as a vessel this morning and give us the heart to receive whatever it is you want to do in the spirit this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, brother. It was a powerful weekend. Not because of uh, any intellectual things that we learned, but because there was an openness in the men, God was able to move. And I thank God for sending Pastor Greg 
all the way from Africa. And I thank you for, I thank you, Pastor Doug, for making that happen. It was a special time because we had a man who doesn't know our culture, but he knows the word of God, and he brought that story of, of, of the axe head swimming. And, you know, I, I thought of it as the mistakes I made along the way as a husband, as a father. And one of the things that Elisha said to the young man who lost his axe head, where did you lose it? And he pointed. That's where I lost it. And Elisha took the stick, put it right on that spot. And the axe head swam. And then Elisha said to that man, now reach out and take it. And these men reached out and took it. And I pray that they will continue to be led by the Spirit of God. To push back the gates of hell. Because our Lord When he gave up his spirit, he said, Father, forgive them, because they do not know what they are doing. And he gave up his spirit, and then he went down to hell and took the keys to the kingdom of God, and he released only that which he could release so that each one of us in this room could be with our daddy in heaven. This morning, you know, yesterday, I kind of knew that the pastor wasn't feeling well because he has never missed a work day here at the chapel, in over 20-some-odd years. And I wasn't sure whether he would be here, but this morning he said he wasn't feeling well enough to come. And I was going to prepare something last night, and I'm home alone with my son, and I decided to spend time with him, to take care of him. And I said, God, you can take care of this morning. So this morning, I, I woke up early, and God just said, just read my word. You know, so today, I'm not going to impart anything from me. I'm going to impart the living word that was penned by a man after God's own heart. David himself. Now this psalm, I've been reading for about 30 years. 
I used to just think that there was just a few lines of the scripture that spoke. But there are many. Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Trust. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn. The justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Commit. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger. Turn from wrath. Do not fret. It only leads to evil. For evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Those were the five pillars that I gleaned for many, many years. Trust, delight, commit, be still and hope. As I continue reading, a little while, and and you'll see themes in this, but the Lord repeats those themes because I'll speak for myself. I need to be told more than once for it to sink in here and here. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and the needy, to slay those whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own hearts and their bows will be broken. Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The days of the blameless are known to the Lord. The days of the blameless are known to the Lord. When you think you're invisible, no one sees you. No one knows your pain. He sees you. 
because the days of the blameless are known to the Lord. And their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. But the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemies will be like the beauty of the fields. They will vanish, vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Those the Lord blesses will inherit the land, but those he curses will be cut off. The Lord delights in a man's way, and he makes his steps firm. Though he stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand, with his mighty hand. I was young, and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be blessed. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. They will be protected forever. But the offspring of the wicked will be cut off and the righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous man utters wisdom, and his tongue speak, speaks what is just. The law of his God is in his heart, and his feet do not slip. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous, seeking their very lives, but the Lord will not leave them in their power or let them be condemned when brought to trial. Wait for the Lord and keep his way. He will exalt you to inherit the land. And when the wicked are cut off, you will see it. I have seen the wicked and the ruthless man flourishing like a green tree in its native soil. But he soon passes away and is no more. Though I look for him, he could not be found. Consider the blameless. Observe the upright. There is future for the man of peace. But all sinners will be destroyed. The future of the wicked will be cut off. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in times of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. If uh, the ministry team could come back up. Hmm. This psalm holds special meaning to me. Because I went through a very difficult period. 
I felt like I felt like the, the Lord abandoned me. I felt like my family abandoned me. I felt like I had spent my entire life trusting in these words. And it all fell apart anyway. But the truth was that God was bringing me to a deeper trust in him. Because he had it all together the whole time. I didn't know it. And I didn't feel it. And I would sit in the back by myself. And when the Spirit of God came in this, in this house, I would weep. And it wasn't just for a few Sundays. It wasn't for a few months. It was for years. And then he started to move. First in me. And then in my wife. And he's still moving because our God never sleeps. He is the way maker. And he began to restore only that which he could restore. And I thank you, Daddy, for carrying me through those times when I could barely carry myself. We serve a God who can. He is the great I am. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. Every knee and every tongue and every knee shall bow at the Maker of our souls. Please stand as we worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we worship you. Someone lift your voice right now. Something happens when you lift your hands to the heaven and worship Jesus. Something happens when you open up your mouth and declare that Jesus is the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega. Something happens, something happens, something happens. Someone open up your mouth this morning. Someone I want to be close, close.
close to your side So heaven is real And death is a lie I want to hear voices Of angels above Singing as one Hallelujah Holy, holy God song this wasn't planned but when the spirit is moving we gotta obey it and the part goes I am completely surrendering finally giving you everything 
said, you're my redeemer, I run to the cross, because you are more than enough, you're, Lord, you complete me, because I'm your Some of us, this morning, I feel like today's service is all about reverence, reverencing the God of all creation. And I'm just feeling in the spirit right now that there's quite a few of us that just need to pull out our white flag and just say, Lord, I surrender. I surrender. Yes, God. I've done it my way for far too long. I'm tired of doing it my way. It's not working. I try to do it in my own strength, and I find myself falling into anxiety and periodic depression. Lord, I am tired. I need you to come in. I need you to have your way. Give your word to me. Write your write your laws on the tablet of my heart. If you are that person today, that's saying, I need to hold up my white flag. I need to surrender it all to you. I need you just to lift up your hands right now. Do not be afraid. You are not here by accident. You are not here by coincidence. God has ordained you to be here this morning because this is your time for breakthrough. Hallelujah. So that you may have dominion. So, Father... In Jesus' name, and I've said this many times before, and I'll keep saying it, some of us in this room have gotten to know you as healer. Some of us in this room have gotten to know you as deliverer. Some of us in this room have gotten to know you as provider. And some of us have gotten to know you as protector. But God, in this season, we need all of it, Jesus. We need all of it, Jesus. Restoration, healing. God, we need breakthrough. We need breakthrough. Renew our minds, God. Break the generational curses in our bloodline. Father, we want back what the enemy stole from our fathers and mothers and grandmothers in Jesus' name. We don't just claim victory, but this morning we're choosing to walk in victory. So God, do what you need to do this morning. For the Spirit of the Lord is willing, able, and ready to do all and above what you can ever think or ask for. And all he requires for you is just to make yourselves available. Commit, hope, believe. Bless your people. Walk in favor. Walk in power. Walk in authority. Be healed, blessed, and be a blessing to those whom you encounter. For you are ambassadors. You are agents of the kingdom of God. 
May your mouths be filled with his word. May you speak prophetically. May when you walk into the room, you change the temperature of the room because you are the thermometer. And go out into the world and let them know that Jesus is Lord and do it by the testimony in your actions. This altar is open for prayer and whatever God wants to do. But when you walk out that door, you're dismissed from this place, but never from his presence. Be blessed and highly favored and have an excellent week. God bless you.